Nintendo have just given us tons of information about Pokemon Legends Arceus. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to 128KB. I'm Andy, and if you're new to the channel, go down there, hit that like and subscribe, and definitely share this video as it really helps us out. But yeah, Nintendo just dropped like a nearly 14 minute long video on the Nintendo UK YouTube channel. And I've wanted to like kind of break it down, go through some of the key points, and kind of just fill you in on all of this information, because there's so much information. Basically, we've all been in the dark a little bit about Pokemon Arceus. Up until now, really, we didn't really know what was going to be going on. We kind of knew like, little snippets, but not very much. And now they've just dropped so much information. So let's get through it, shall we? <laughs> so it's set in the Hisui region, later known as what we know it as, the Sinnoh region. So yeah, okay, cool. So Mount Coronet is in the center. So what we're gonna have is the mountain in the middle of the map, and then we've got different environments sort of spread around it. And each environment has specific Pokemon types in each area. So, you know, you're gonna have like, sort of like a grassy area where obviously we're gonna find the, like the grass type, and then we're gonna have like a more watery area or maybe be like an icy snowy sort of area or a beachy area that kind of thing that's pretty cool i like the the sort of idea of having each zone that you can go to for the different types of pokemon in each and also each area has its own crafting materials for creating healing sort of items lures smoke bombs pokeballs and more as well so your own pokemon can harvest the materials so you can actually throw a pokemon out and it will break a rock for you uh, you can pick flowers to get crafting items as well you can knock them out of trees which looks really cool and you can even get them by catching pokemon as well i guess that's like a chance drop so it won't be like every time you catch a pokemon maybe but i imagine you'll get chance drops so when you catch certain ones you'll you'll get something back from them so the crafting area which is basically like a little picnic basket <laughs> shows what materials you need and how many of them you need for each item so what they show in the video is only two things which i think is a heal pokemon heal and a pokeball and then the rest of the slots are empty so i suppose you've got to kind of like learn how to craft them first by maybe doing missions or side quests and then you'll be able to sort of make them yourself and also the time of day and weather affects which pokemon show up in the wild so some will also ignore you some will run away from you and flee and others will be aggressive and will actually attack you on site so if there's one that you can attack that will attack you on site if you throw a pokeball at it straight away and it doesn't catch it first try well then you'll never be able to catch it again until you fight it because every time you throw a pokeball it will just bounce off them so then you actually have to throw your own pokemon out and sort of get the health down and then you'll be able to catch it as well which is kind of standard pokemon stuff really but i do like the fact that you'll be running around in the open and sort of see these so, so certain ones will just charge at you and others will run away or some might just be kind of friendly it's kind of cool but you can distract pokemon with berries as well to make them you know to make them easier to catch so they show a uh, a psyduck i think it is in the video and they, they throw a berry the psyduck runs over starts eating it and then and then they manage to catch it which is pretty cool and you can black out if you take too much damage so if you've been you know got a aggro on you and a Pokemon starts attacking you or maybe you run into a high level Pokemon and you take a couple of hits well you can black out and you will actually lose some of your sort of materials or items in your bag as well I imagine it's only sort of minor things I can't imagine you're going to lose like really good items but it is something to take note of so what we already knew about Pokemon Arceus is that you know we've got to catch and catalog different Pokemon because we knew this was kind of making the first Pokedex starting from scratch this is like the first ever Pokemon game in terms of like the storyline and where it's set so we already knew that that you had to catch and catalog different pokemon and you'll need to catch them multiple times possibly or catch them displaying different moves or certain behaviors as well so i imagine it won't just be like catch one pokemon i imagine it will be like catch the same pokemon but maybe like an angry version or a scared version or like one that's doing a certain move so you know we're gonna have to catch multiple on that so you will receive currency when completing objectives as well so once you've done certain things on like the catalog front you will end up getting some sort of currency which they say will let you buy items or materials as well 
And also they've let slip as well, which we kind of already knew just from past trailers, but there's three Pokemon so far for traveling. I'm not too sure if there's other Pokemon that will allow you to do it or if it's just set to these three. And I'm gonna butcher their names, but you've got the Y Deer, or the, yeah, the Y Deer for land, the Hisuian Braviary for flying. I've no idea how to say these names. And the Bascu Legion for rivers and seas. Now, again, we see in the trailer that there's like one for each sort of area or like, you know, one for land, one for sky and one for sea. I'm not too sure if you'll be able to get other Pokemon that will let you do that, but at least you can travel around. Now, I wonder where in the game you'll sort of do that. I imagine you're gonna have to catch them first, but hopefully it's fairly, fairly early on because I've no idea how big the actual map is to sort of traverse. So you've got one main village. Again, I'm rubbish with names, but Jubilife, Jubilife Village, which has a medical corpse, security corpse, and survey corpse. So I'm guessing there's gonna be like a storyline quest sort of, quest line for each of these corps. So like, you know, the medical corps will be like, go out and get certain berries to make potions or something like that, or go heal these many Pokemons or whatever. And the security corps maybe be like, protect this area from this sort of Pokemon that's harassing it. I, I don't know, but I imagine each corp is going to have its own sort of like storyline arc and quest line, which is kind of cool as well. And it seems like this town is like the center base town. So I'm unsure if there's like other towns that we'll be visiting or if it is literally just this one town and everything re revolves around this one town in terms of like handing quests back in or like just going there to get new quests. I've no idea, but it looks from the map to be just one town there but I am unsure whether or not there will be more. I'm kind of fine if it's just one town, but then the, the areas to explore are much bigger. I'm okay with that, but I guess we've just got to wait and see, really. What I did like the look of, though, is that they show that the camera is completely unlocked in this town. So instead of it being just set like we've always seen, you can actually move the camera around in this village. And you have your own house, it seems, as well. So I wonder if we'll be able to like decorate it at all, or if it's just set as it is. I imagine you're not really going to spend that much time there but it'd be kind of cool if you could like put certain items out or something like that that'd be kind of cool and yes there is crafting you've got clothing stations trading posts to trade with other players as too and yes you can change individual clothes rather than just your whole outfit i was a bit worried as to whether it would be like an entire outfit change but no you can actually change your hat your jacket your legs your boots that kind of thing which is kind of cool as well and you can change your hairstyle and your hair color as well along with main storyline missions that progress Progress the storyline, you've got side quests called requests from villagers that were asked to see certain Pokemon up close. So you'll you'll have to go and catch one and then show them, or maybe they'll ask for a Pokemon, you know, to give to them or whatever it is. And when you do that, you will get some sort of reward from them as well, whether that's like crafting items or like just items in general, I suppose. And then your quests get added to your Arc phone. So this is like, I guess you've just got like a mobile phone, even though it looks like it's set like in olden times and you can drop pins here markers on on your map and sort of see quest objectives i kind of like that i do like the the ability that to pop up a map and then you kind of see oh yeah that's that's where i'm going to be going or or you can drop your own marker if you found like a rare pokemon but you you can't catch it yet because you're too low level maybe you can drop a marker by the look of it and then go back there later which is kind of cool so you can throw your own Pokemon out in the wild to initiate Pokemon battles. And if you catch the Pokemon off guard, you can get a chance to basically get like two attacks right in at, at once, I suppose. So instead of just taking your attack and then waiting for them to attack, if you're quick about it, you've got the chance to be able to do two attacks right away. It is still turn-based, but you now have two styles that the Pokemon can choose from. So you've got a strong style, which basically uses more power, but can delay your next turn. Or you've got agile style, which uses less power, so you'll be, you know, less powerful, but you'll get a quicker attack as well. But using both types of styles will use more PP, so you're gonna have to sort of pick and choose when you're gonna initiate one of these styles. You have new rarer alpha Pokemon now, which are much larger with glowing red eyes, and they are harder to catch and more powerful as well. And I guess, again, this is kind of like a bit of a world boss style thing where you're gonna just roll up and see this big Pokemon with glowing red eyes. It's gonna be like aggressive, and it's gonna take a lot more sort of skill and more like fighting to get it down and then be able to capture it and you can capture them and you can have them on your team and they'll be much more powerful I suppose and you also have noble Pokemon which we've seen already I talked about it in 
the previous video that I said would look like world bosses. And these noble Pokemon, for some reason, and I guess we'll find out in the storyline, are frenzied. And you'll have to throw these sort of like bombs at them, which are apparently like their favorite foods or something. And then you calm them down. So they've got like a big boss sort of health bar and you're just running around as you and sort of throwing these items at, at the Pokemon to get the health down enough to then be able to fight it with your Pokemon. And again, it looks again, kind of like a bit of a world boss. So you've got these alpha Pokemon and then these noble Pokemon that are gonna be like way more powerful out in the open. And I'm not too sure if you can capture the noble Pokemon, but hopefully because they look pretty cool as well. But you know, that's a lot of information there and there's so much more that they show in terms of like, you know, footage, which you've been seeing over this entire video. I've been showing you exactly what I'm sort of referring to in this video here. So that's a lot of information about Pokemon Arceus. I know Game Freak can do better in terms of like the art style and, and the graphics because they're such a big company but I really want to give them a chance here. I think it does look good. For me, for someone that I keep reiterating, is kind of bored of the original formula of Pokemon, and I love Pokemon, I really do, and I do love the original Pokemon games, but I've just been bored of it. It's, it's, I've felt like it's a bit stagnant. We haven't had any change in like nearly 30 years, and it's just, I don't know, it's put me on the back foot and this really looks like a more of an RPG style game that I'm gonna get into like, you know, with an open world design, having to go and craft stuff, find crafting items, the different type of Pokemon that you're gonna like meet. I, I don't know, I am pretty excited about this to be perfectly honest, From especially from what I've seen here. It does look really cool. But again, time will tell. We won't really know until we get into the game how big it is. Is it gonna be quite small? Is there only just that one town? Are these sort of different areas around that mountain that are the different environments? Are they gonna be big or are they gonna be really small? Like, is there gonna be enough to do or, is, or are these quests just gonna be like, uh, you know, rinse and repeat, go go gather this and bring it back, go gather that, bring it back. Is it gonna be like a bit of an MMO grind or is it gonna be fun? Is the story gonna be engaging and captivating and are the quests gonna be fun? I don't know, but we will find out because I will be live streaming this as soon as we get our hands on it. But yeah, until then, this is all the information that we're probably gonna be getting and that's a lot of information. So let me know down in the comments what you like about this, what, what you're not too keen on, what you're expecting, what your hopes are, or why you're not really enjoying it. But yeah, my name's Andy, this is 128KB. Check out our website, 128kb.co.uk. Go down there, hit that like and subscribe button and share this video as well. Anyway, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.